258 here, back again. I'm your host, Ford Antonio Brown, and today we got with me another episode of Support Section. Make sure you drop the comments down below. Um, you know, if you want to see more guests, what we should provide for you guys, and providing content for the Canadians out there. So yeah, keep tuning in. Today we got with me a special guest. He's all over the globe. He's currently in France. Today we got with me Catherine Liu. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. No worries. No worries. So um, many people might not know your story, but you know, I'm sure in a few years you're gonna be hot property, especially with the national team coming up and their success. Uh, just explain to the people what you do and why you're so good at what you do. <laughs> Well, so I'm a, I'm a sports photographer, mainly in football. Um, I like I started kind of in, in 2019 when I was 19 years old. I didn't really have a, a plan. I didn't, I kind of just fell into this role basically <clears throat> and jumped into the deep end shooting MLS, uh, the event for Whitecaps. And kind of over time, I've sort of, even though it was kind of an accident, I ended up there, I realized that this is what I wanted to do with my career. But like capturing moments and like capturing passion is like it's it's like the the moment it's kind of like when in my time that I feel most alive. And yes, and from shooting white caps, I've kind of gone on to shoot everything from um Canadian men's national team, uh CPL and like Canadian Premier League and just a bunch of other leagues kind of through that. Yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. So to get into your occupation or your career, how does that work? It's hard. A lot of people ask me, like I, I, all the time people just DM me on Instagram, hey, how do I, how do I get into sports photography? It's, it's kind of tricky. Mine was completely accidental. And I think a lot of my friends sort of had a similar pathway that I did when we, we kind of created our own outlets. So. The way I got in was I started, my friend wanted to start a, a soccer news site. I was like, yeah, I'm down. I had, like, I have a camera at home. I could take pictures. And, you know, he just started grinding out articles. And at first I thought I'd also be writing a little bit, but I quickly realized like, I'm not, it's not really writing is not my favorite thing to do. Um, <clears throat> but I just kind of kept shooting. So for me, it was just like, I have, I've, I've created this outlet and I, so I can get accreditation to games, but that's how I did it. That's how a couple of my friends did, but it's like not the only way at all. It's definitely the most complicated way to do it, but there are like tons of photographers who just started shooting from the stands. They wouldn't necessarily try to get action shots. They try to capture the atmosphere, the environment from their perspective. Some would start with, uh, <clears throat> shooting their local high school team, their local college team, just amateur teams and sort of, you know, kind of getting clients through there saying, going to local clubs and saying, hey, I could shoot this for $100. And kind of you keep moving up like that. That's how like a lot of photographers have done it. It's not an, it's not like a one path sort of thing. It's really like, kind of whatever comes you just have to take your opportunities basically understood understood um i'm guessing you're a big fan of football because you chose that specific you know lane to go uh shoot pictures in uh, what where did it start and what did it stem from what was your upbringing in football and how mm. does that relate to <clears throat> taking pictures only in football yeah, I was well in Canada, like most people like think oh Canada, like it's more of a hockey country, which it is, but hockey's incredibly expensive. So for like for, like people don't realize it, but soccer, football, I'm just gonna bounce between the two, but uh soccer's the most played sport in the country. Like 
you like by far because it's it's so accessible there and so everyone at my school is always playing soccer i played it a little bit when i was like i mean like five or six but i didn't really like it that much but I, like growing up in elementary school i just i didn't have a lot of friends i had a hard time fitting in in my school and i just i couldn't you know i never felt like i belonged there and i remember when i was 10 years old like one day i just decided i'm gonna go play soccer with all the kids who play soccer and like that i just there's something about the feeling of like just kind of like everyone playing the same thing everyone having the same idea you're you got something to talk about it was like i loved it and that was right around the time uh the world cup was in south africa so i kind of just it was all perfect timing so my dad is french um he moved he immigrated to canada in the 90s so he had he obviously has a background in football and so i find it like during the world cup i was you know following the french national team my mom is dutch i was following the dutch national team um and i just kind of like fell in love with like the the energy that happens around the world when the world cup is on it's like something that everyone knows that feeling even when there's not a game on everyone knows that like there's something happening um and so like just you know from the age of 10 on i was never a very good player cuz i kind of started a bit late but i i loved the sport i like watching games everything like that it was always like i have adhd so in school i could never write a paper on anything right like do a project but if it was on football then it would always be like my i would work my ass off on it because i was learning something i was passionate about it and when it came to football like and like photographing it this like the passion you get in the sport isn't like nothing else the the access like the fans they're they're like so passionate about the club no matter where you are so kind of being able to capture that and the emotion of the players on the field it it was something like like i knew i had to be here because i like i also you know growing up in canada we like i said we're not always associated as being like a football country so when like being able to tell these stories from a canadian perspective like that for me is like what i'm most excited about because growing up it was never about the canadian national team i was interested in the dutch team the french team and now I, i'm kind of realizing there's so much more to talk about with these smaller countries canada's one but any small country in the world has such an interesting history and that's something that i sort of want to capture and this is just a perfect time to start uh talking about the canadian national team but that like really any small nation any like unique story is what i like to sort of capture yeah you've entered the market at the the perfect time you know and of course like you said you know you grew up watching the dutch and french national teams because of your parents but there was probably not so many role models for you to get involved in to canada um growing up do you remember anybody from you know playing in canada or playing abroad who you did um look up to you mean like like playing for the canadian national team or like yeah who were canadian who were canadian specifically mm. Um well like I said I started watching around when I was 10 and I didn't really honestly follow the national team until I was maybe 16 or something like that part of me so I would say like any Canadians there's obviously Dwayne De Rosario like quite here about all the time but I don't think I ever actually watched a game of his but I would just hear about him all the time um you know any guys who played for the Vancouver Whitecaps because that was my local team I before I was shooting I was like uh, a big fan I would always go like to every game for a while and even like before that I'd always keep track and so I remember Russell Tybert growing up because uh he scored two goals against the LA Galaxy one time that was one of my first games I I went to in person so for me like Tyber was always someone like growing up who I was a big fan of and then Alfonso Davies obviously during his time in Vancouver just unreal we knew he was going to be good but it's so uh, we're all like everyone in Vancouver is so happy to see what this guy's done everyone has a fancy story like they went to high school with him or like they ran into him at this mall and like yeah it's always like that but from a young age honestly there weren't any i don't remember supporting even following canadian football until i was yeah 16 uh do you have a alfonso 
Davy's story um, that maybe you heard from somebody else? Um, I'm trying to think. I see. I I'm one of like the few people who never really like. I never ran into him in a mall, or I never, I never like got an autograph at a game or anything like that. From my, I have like a lot of friends. Yeah, who like run into him at like a store and like their grand, they get like a picture with their grandma with him and like stuff like that. Or I yeah, I have a friend who take classes like was at the same high school as he was, but he was just a very nice guy. But. Like ever, it was just sort of a thing. Like everyone in Vancouver had a Fonzie story. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you're around the team now, so I'm guessing <laughs> it will be overdue that you'll be one of the people who get to meet him very soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So who's your who's your? You said Vancouver Whitecaps was your team growing up, right? But you probably had other teams <clears throat> in Europe that you looked to as well or supported. Who was those teams in Europe? Yeah, um, I mean, the, my team in, like, I'd say my favorite team in Europe was definitely, it's a small team, En Avant Gangan. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a small French team. Uh, it's in a town of 15,000 people. And that's, it's the town where my dad was born and grew up. They're in Ligue 2 right now. They were in Ligue 1 for a few years. Uh, drug ball was, like, kind of kicked off his career there, sort of. It's uh, just... It's the randomest team. I'm like anytime I tell anyone about it, like they might know it, but it's it's not like a big. It, it's more of like just a, a family thing. And through my dad, I, I'm also a bit of an Arsenal fan because you know early 2000s they had so many like incredible French players. So my dad would like kind of that's how my dad became an Arsenal fan. And you know I I definitely didn't get to pick that team. Um, but it's it's still a team that you know, like it, it it's a connection with my father, so that's sort of something important to me. Oh, I know a lot of uh, French people. Anytime I meet a French person, they always support Arsenal in England, for example, because like you said, they had so many great players: Emmanuel Petit, Vieira, Henri. Um, the list goes on. Arsene Wenger as well. So yeah, you know, yeah. I I understand why. You guys, uh, you know, supported supported Arsenal growing up. Um, do you remember your first game that you went to as a as a kid? Oh yeah, um, I don't remember like a lot of details about it, but I remember when I must have been nine or ten years old. This was before the Vancouver Whitecaps were in MLS; they were in the USL, and my dad. There, this was at a small stadium, Swan Guard Stadium in Vancouver, like a couple thousand people. Um, and my dad, my, my friend was going with his dad and my dad was like, oh, do you, why don't we go with them? So we went, we stood in the, the general admission section. Um, it was just like, it was more of like an event for me. Like the game was one thing, but I just kind of walk around the stadium, kind of there's activities for, for kids here and they're like little context contests on the side and um and I, at the time I couldn't I didn't really have like the brain to to understand the game yet so I like I wasn't super fixated on the match but it was just kind of like that experience of like being in the stadium and after like I got autographs from the players and I as a kid it was the most exciting thing ever um and like I kept I, like we'd go back every couple games my dad and I we'd bike over to the stadium and then just kind of like enjoy these these games and to me it was like the most exciting thing like it was this old like this was before we had like that logo like the diamond one it was very like old school north american style logo and it was just like i still have my jersey from that time it's it's like i have such good memories from swan guard stadium um so it was definitely like a nice way for me to to get in the sport there at a lower level yeah you mentioned the jersey that you know, you have at the time, what is your all-time favorite jersey, football jersey? Oh, um, I'd say, I mean, if there's one I could ever get my hands on, it would definitely be a France 98 jersey. I just, like, I just always associate that one with, like, like kind of history. And I was, I was just, France won the World Cup before I was born, but it was, 
I just always associate that as like this, like this important moment. Um, and like, I've looked back on it. It's like, I've watched so m- I've watched the game over um, against Brazil. For me, like that jersey, I definitely say the most, you know, the one I want to get my hands on the most. In terms of like, which one aesthetically would be my favorite? I'm trying to think. I I might still go with that one, although I know I'm missing some. I know after this, I'm going to be thinking I should have maybe a Dutch kit. This maybe one. maybe one of the Dutch kits. Yeah, I mean, like the Holland '88 one is like the like that's the the holy grail. Yeah, everyone wants wants to get their hands on that. The value is like insane. They're so hard to find, but uh, I yeah, I'd have to go with. I mean, yeah, just the Dutch, the, that Dutch kit specifically is incredible to me. In recent years, I found they've been a little flat. I mean, this past year, they had a good one, but it's it, they can kind of go up and down with the Dutch ones. But um, I, I think the French in general have had a little more luck with what they've been given for kits. Yeah, yeah. Um, the iconic orange, you know, it's kind of hard to emulate that. 88 kit like you said so yeah they they always have probably problems trying to please the fans like yourself um, yeah <laughs> getting the best kits possible um just quickly um guys you know we're watching the video drop a like drop a comment even a dislike if you don't like the video it's up to you it helps with engagement so i'm not really too fast just make sure you subscribe if you're always watching and make sure to comment down below going back to the video um, let's talk about your role, uh, taking pictures, photography, and everything like that. So describe a normal match day, or let's actually let's start from the beginning. Like, what? Who was the first person who called you and told you, you know, we wanna, we want a photographer at our game, and we want you to come. You described how you, like you got into it and everything like that, but. Describe how you got introduced into, you know, pro football or even amateur football. Mm. So I sort of basically like, yeah, how I was I, I created my own, like I co-founded like my own uh, outlet and that was my access to games. So I've still to this day, that's how I attend most of my games. It's through the outlet that I created. Um, but I've had, you know, like, I remember it was midway through my first year. I, I reached out to, cause it's still like, even, you know, it's, it's, it's a tricky industry to play around with because it's a lot, it's based on contact. So I was, you have to reach out a lot of times and say, Hey, I, like I'm, I'm available here. Are you interested? This is what I can do for you. Um, and I think one of the first times I remember was shooting uh, my, as I, it's the university I actually go to in, in Vancouver, uh, SFU, uh, I reached out to them and I said, hey, would you be interested in having me, uh, in hiring a photographer? I can do this. This is my experience shooting. And so I, and since I've gone on to shoot them a couple of times, but that was, I remember like I was on vacation, but I was still sending these emails in during the day, like, and then at night, like I'd go out, but it was this kind of like, for me, that was a very exciting time because I was still getting started, but I wanted like, it was like, okay, I've done, I've done MLS a little bit, but I want to like kind of create my own thing, like on my own and, you know, kind of, it's hard to explain because it's, it's maybe like a lower level, but it was my way of like reaching out and being, being there for someone else, not my own outlet, but having someone want me to be there. So that was sort of the first time I got into that was shooting like just university football but it's those kinds of like experiences that almost like mean a lot more to me in a sense yeah so you know you're going from university shooting at games and stuff and you're very reliable at that level where they can call you anytime to go um, shoot games there describe you know basically being the one that they rely on to shoot at either Canadian games and you know what is the process do can anybody right now basically 
write an email and shoot at these games or do you need to have some type of track record to do that? Mm. So I've never shot. It, it's, it's tricky. You honestly, there's not, there isn't, they're not going to go and say, Hey, do you have a, a degree in photography? Do you have this, you know, no one giving out press access is going to be necessarily looking to make sure that you have the qualifications. What matters is that you have connections who can get, what I mean, who can get access to games. So that's where having an outlet is the most important thing. You can get into, you like, anyone can get in, but you have to prove to, you have to prove that you're able to do it. So that's where kind of having experience comes in. At least, at the very least, you gotta know how to use a camera, but you know, it, it's an exciting time because even if you're not on the sidelines shooting game, you still have a story to tell. You can still be in the fans section and get a unique perspective on a game. Um, I've never, like, I don't shoot the Canadian men's national team or any, like, Canadian national team at the moment for uh, Canada soccer. It's, it's for my outlet. But there are tons of outlets out there who, you know, like, there's so many opportunities right now to create an outlet. This is, a, like, a great time to start getting, like, getting into Canadian football, um, even football in the States, like it's very, it's like a period of growth where people are still figuring things out. In Europe, for example, it's a, it's a little harder to, might be a little more difficult to get into a Premier League match because it's, the structure's a lot more set in stone there and they might, you need to have agencies, you need to have all this, but, you know, in, in Canadian football, it, it's, it's kind of like, this moment of just, there's no, you know, no one's ever going to say, like I said, you don't need to have a degree or anything, but you have to prove to people who are willing to back you up and bring, like, essentially bring you to games that you have the skill. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, describe the match day experience, for example, whether that be, you know, MLS, CPL game or whatever. Uh, what is the process that you go through that maybe fans don't go through fans go through the gate show their ticket gets in what 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 is the preparation for you on a match day mm. yeah it, so it, it starts it can already start like way before it depends like let's say like a white caps game i've already got my press pass sorted out to the season i don't need to keep reapplying each game but say i'm i'm going to pacific on the island or i'm going to a canada game i send an email my outlet, we send an email, a group one for writers, photographers, videographers, whoever, however many people are bringing. And we say, um, yeah, we're, we just basically ask for a press pass. They, they let us know, okay, you've been approved. So we go, I'll go and I'll, I usually, I love to be at the stadium as early as possible. You know, sometimes they let you in three hours before. I'll usually like do two and a half hours before, two hours before kickoff before the fans are there so that I can take my time. So I go to wherever it is I need to pick up my pass, pick it up and just go. Uh, and I, I can just basically just show the pass, show, like let security see my camera bag, go into the stadium. And I'm usually there before, uh, before the fans are in. And there's usually uh, like a dedicated room for photographers to set up our gear, uh, to edit photos. So I get kind of set up in there, take my time uh you know i'm usually not too stressed just taking it easy uh i like to get some some warm-up shots just in case to sort of like get warmed up like test the lighting because you know it, and it'll usually change since most games are outdoors just gotta like kind of see where where i need to adjust settings during the game and then that sort of once the game started i'm usually in a seat for the i'll pick a seat before the game where like I want to shoot. Usually if I'm shooting a Vancouver game, I want to be on their attacking side because I want to get the goals. Those are the exciting moments that in a game are like, no one's going to remember this one random defensive play. Everyone's going to remember the goal. Sorry, defender. That's, sorry. sorry. I, yeah. It's, that's the thing. I always feel bad because I never get like, I never get shots of defenders. And then my writer like was asking me, Hey, do you have a shot of this guy? I need, I, he was my man of the match. I was like, I didn't, he didn't come up for a corner. I got nothing for you. Uh, you have to use an old photo. So it's, it's yeah, I always feel bad. I never touch defenders, but 
it, the exciting plays are always the the goals. Um, so I usually I usually set up on the offensive side if there's a specific team I'm shooting, and you know set up around just behind the goal, about just over to the side near wherever the side of the box is. That's usually like my where I love shooting from. And for 45 minutes, it can be either absolutely nothing. It can be like just sitting there. Like I'll be on my phone sometimes. because It's so hard to see down the field when you're at eye level. Like I have no idea what goes on in a game. Like most of the time I can't see super well, but when I, you can always tell when the action is coming towards you. So that's when I'm getting, I, I, like I'm lift, I've got my camera in my hands. Now I'm like ready to go if anything happens. And it's always like those moments where they they're rushing towards and like something happens. It's like my heart is going. It's the, like the feeling of adrenaline. There's nothing like it. Time slows down. Like I have a I started mounting my phone on top of my camera to record video just mm. so I can look back after and see what actually happened. And that like looking through it it goes so much faster than I remember but for me it's like every shot I remember like very specifically like following it and it felt so slow to me and second half I'll probably switch sides to still stay on the offensive side um and then at end of the game it's always fun because the, pl- the players will usually either go thank the fans or they'll walk off of a certain part of the field so I always like to be there for shots after the game of the players where they're, if they're celebrating, they're like hyping up the fans, they're screaming, they're pumping their fists. They might even just go and have a conversation with some fans, sign autographs. Um, and for like the, but the really exciting shots, the ones I always kind of remember are the ones where there, there's so much emotion in the players' faces and they're, they're screaming at the crowd. They're, they're loving the moment. And, for me, like though, like there are games that I I remember mainly for what happened after the game, and then I then I'll take it sort of back to the the photography room, throw all the pictures onto my hard drive, and then I'll edit. Usually, I'll just do two or three shots for the night for for my writer, and then I'll actually go back later on and go through the entire game and like weed out out of like. 1,000, 2,000 photos, maybe 50 to 150 shots that are, gonna, are any good. Makes sense. That's an that's a exciting day. Um, it's <laughs> so interesting to hear from a different perspective like yourselves. Um, for my experience, you know, it's a lot different compared to yours. And I also experienced, for example, you know, being a fan of my own team, for example, if I wasn't playing, I was injured as a player and I would be going to games, what would that experience be like at my own match day? That is very intriguing that I found as well um, that, you know, I didn't get to see because, you know, say, for example, like playing for Cavs, for example, in, in Calgary, when I was injured and I go to games on a match day, I was so surprised that some of the things I saw before the game take place, I had no idea that took place. I'm just focused normally on the game and actually going through, you know, one entrance and coming out one entrance after the game. I don't really see too much of what goes on throughout the, the match day. So, yeah, like yourself, you know, you have a different experience to the fans also, where you're going through your certain type of protocol and stuff. And um, yeah, it's interesting to hear what you you have to say. Um, is it is it is it weird being so close to the fans? Like you're on the pitch, but you're not on the pitch type of thing. Is that kind of a, a weird place to be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like some stadiums, it's way more separate. You know, you've got like like the fans aren't on the same level as you are. There's like gates between them, and like where I am, so there's not really like it is kind of like this big separation but then pacific stadium for example the fan section like the supporter section is on the ground like on the field level they're just on the other side of the the fence basically but they're right there with where i am so when i shot this past year i shot uh vancouver versus pacific the the fairy side derby match and the the fans were like 
they, they were the Pacific fans were there in full force because there was sort of like this like this underdog mentality that they had that they they had something to prove and then nothing to lose this game. So they were the fans were very excited, but they were right there with me. So they'd like kind of knock into me when they were celebrating, and I love it. That's my favorite thing because, like I said, like for me, like any no one care. I'm not that no one cares. They're important shots, but the shots for me that matter the least are the the action shots of a player shooting if it's not a goal or something like that but the passion you get from fans behind you like screaming that's what makes football unique and that's like the stories about that and that's like when they're right there and I'm like I've got fans yelling in my ear I've got like horns going off around me it's like it just makes the experience of shooting so much more exciting you know I love listening to player or the fans like do their chants sometimes like in Vancouver, there's this one guy who always yells at the opposing team's goalie. And like, I, every time I hear him, I can't help but smile, though, because it's just like the the culture is like the, that's what it's all. It's all about the culture for me. Like it's like that's the most exciting part of it. Yeah, sounds sounds amazing. Sounds, you know, very, very exciting when you're there hearing the fans, they're screaming and maybe you also feel like you want to be a part of them um but you're doing your job and you're doing it very well so uh continue whatever you're doing continue what you're doing um are you ever cold during the game and how do you deal with you know the weather aspect if it's raining how do you take pictures and stuff like that mm, yeah it, it's tricky because you're not moving like the whole time you're there you're just sitting down and your, your muscles start to you know tense up and you got no you're not creating you're not generating any heat basically so the rain the rain's just it's not fun to shoot in the rain but it does look good in in photos having like these moody shots of players um it makes any action shot look more interesting when you've got a bunch of rain coming down um but when it's cold like that's the trickiest part so in in november i was at the azteca match canada versus mexico in edmonton it was like minus 10 I can't remember exactly what it was, minus 10, minus 15 or something. And I, like, we were, like, during the day, i just flown into Edmonton. We, I got to our Airbnb, and we just didn't leave because it was too cold. It was too snowy. Like, there was just nothing to do. Walking anywhere would take way too long in the snow. And so I had, under, like, for the game, I had long johns underneath. I had my park. I had, like, four layers. My hat, I had warm gloves. I didn't have uh, this little hand warmer packages. That That is the one thing I was missing for that game. But it was like, as you, I had like something under a cushion under my, like on, on my seat. So my, my, my butt wouldn't freeze. It was just this, this crazy, like, oh, it was just, it was so cold. And when basically like my hands, I don't like shooting with gloves on. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like, cause it's clumsy, you know, you'll, you'll like, I won't notice them pressing a button and I'll ruin like 10, 20 shots by accident because I, I had a button pressed that I shouldn't have. So what, what I was doing was I had my ha- hands in my gloves, whenever the action was on the other side and when I could tell they were coming, I'd yeah. take my right glove off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would just, I'd take the glove off and I would like shoot barehanded for like, a minute 30 seconds however long I, I had to and then as soon as they were gone I'd put my hand back in I'd just like do whatever I could to warm it up because it was freezing and I, I I like there was a moment where like it was like when it get when your hand gets so cold at one point it just starts to burn and that's like I like I had that several times during the game and it was it was so insane but in general I, I, that's something I've never experienced the only other time I've experienced like true even like a bit cold was a cat when I shot cavalry um, oh. in, at the finals in 2019. And that was, that was something else. The, the grass already was like, at that point it was pretty horrendous, the, the yellow grass, but the stadium was amazing. Um, but I just, that was the first time I, like, I remember having to like put like, you know, long johns underneath and like be ready to go. Oh, so that, that's good that you were prepared because yeah, <laughs> oh, that game, that wasn't the coldest yeah. game that we had though. There was another yeah. game a couple of weeks before and 
if you were there for that game, I think you might have gone home because <laughs> <laughs> that game was unbelievable. Even I was on the pitch, I was like, I want to go. I don't want to play <laughs> this game. Oh, why am I here? Like, why am I even a footballer? You know, all, <laughs> all of these thoughts uh, was coming from my head, but, you know, we won that yeah. game. So it kind of just made it a little bit more worthwhile while we actually did it. So, yeah, um, it's actually very interesting to hear what you have to go through in a game. So <clears throat> describe now, you know, I know a few other photographers and, you know, your colleagues and your peers you know there's a lot of you in Canada where a few of you have like decent names you know where um, you're you're rated you're um, reliable and you know I can't really remember playing elsewhere where I actually know personalities or maybe I don't know the person but I definitely know their name for example um, you know we'll speak about the Brandon side of it afterwards but uh, who do you rate in Canada and how is it competition wise on and off the field? So on the field, for example, you guys are all probably trying to take your own shots. Do you have courtesy where one person has to stay in their area and they can't come in your area or how does it work? You know? Mm. Yeah. That's the thing with, like, I don't have a reference point for, for anywhere in Europe really, but what I do know is that in, in uh in Canada and in, in the states it's very like it to me at least it seems very collaborative right so I started in 2019 um at my I, my first year I met uh when I was shooting at one point someone came up to me and he introduced himself uh his name was Bo uh on Instagram shot by Bo and yeah. he was starting at the same time I was and we him and I like I said I always like to be there as like pretty early before the game most photographers don't really like to it's just you know they don't they don't need to they already know what they're doing I for me it's more just like a way of getting in the right mind space but Bo was always there early too and he was the same age as I was we were both like the youngest ones there so we would just spend hours just chatting um, and we kind of came into the sport at the same time so through this like like even though Bo and I, in a, like you could say that we're competing for diff- the same shot, but really like he's the the person I go to, the first person I ever go to if I need help with something. There's so much collaboration. I like through this, I've met I've met some of my best friends. Shuttersworth right now is crazy. Like he's the guy for Canadian football. Like in terms of photography, he just goes he moves different. This guy hmm. and like through the it, it there's never been a moment where like I've been like we've ever like all oh, like getting in each other's way we're competing with these guys it's never like that because we want to see each other succeed right like it doesn't matter who you're shooting for like there's still like we just want we just want everyone to be happy like we we want each other to kind of grow and there's always yeah like I hear so many times like YouTubers say like don't don't look at your your competition as don't look at other people in your field as competition because you can learn from their mistakes they can learn from your mistakes and you can learn how to grow together there's no it doesn't make sense to try to do it alone because you're just you're missing out on so many different skills that other people might be able to teach you um so that's that's the thing with Canadian football I've even had um, so right now I'm in France. I'm, I'm doing an exchange here while the season's off, uh, over in Canada. And I had someone reach out to me the other day, Audrey, Audrey Mani, uh, photography on Instagram. She reached out to me and was like, Hey, if you need, uh, she was just basically offering me some advice on shooting in France, but it's, that's the thing I've noticed is that I don't know where, what it's like elsewhere in the world, but in Canada, and I'm pretty sure in the U.S., it's like this as well. It's very collaborative. There's a lot of support. Shouting out other creators and uh, creators isn't a word I like to. I, I gotta stay away from that word. It's not. <laughs> it's not the best word to say. Artist is a much better way of yeah, way putting it. But yeah, but like shouting out each other's work on Instagram and like and showing like this is what this person's doing. Like kind of creating just basically showcasing 
other people's work it's it's such a common thing here you know it's not it's it, there's no competition really we all want to succeed and we all want to see each other succeed like I, I I'm bringing it back to Bo but Bo and I came in at the exact same time same age we didn't know what we were doing but we learned kind of we learned everything together and seeing what he's doing now he's shooting for for Canada soccer he's doing all this this incredible stuff it makes me so happy to see what this guy's doing and I, there's no there's no uh I I've I've heard you know there's some photographers who I've who are I won't name any names but I've, I've had experiences where some usually the older generation will like get mad at you if you get in if you're standing in a certain spot they'll yell because you're in their shot but that's this old way of looking at it I I could never see myself <clears throat> getting mad because someone's tr- getting a shot from the angle I want to get one well that then it's my job to do better not someone else's job to not get in my way but in the end ever like for a lot of people it, it's you know that's how they that's how the sport was when they got into it and that's you know that's just their understanding of it but for me I want to collaborate with people I want I want to see other people succeed too there's no I never like look at someone and say I want like I don't want them to to succeed because that's just you should never go through life with that mentality but it's not like it's not like you're stealing someone's camera on the sideline and and stealing it and taking their picture and um, taking a picture and running off you know um you all have your own cameras and you all have your own type of skill set so I, I don't really see where jealousy can come into it or anything like that i don't yeah this is a bit weird if that is to happen but um yeah someone I'll shout out is Nora. She's really good. Yes. Um, very, very good at her job. And, you know, she is very, like I said, like I mentioned, with the players, she knows what the players want. And, um, you know, she's very responsive in getting the pictures out there to the players. Taking pictures, right? Is there a certain type of art or a certain type of way to take a picture? What, what is the... When you learn how to take pictures, especially in football... Is there, does somebody tell you you need to be at this angle and capture their face or what, what do you go for? What type of things do you go for? I mean, there's a lot of, uh, people call them rules in photography. So you got the rule of thirds. Um, you, there's like a lot of, a lot of these things like shooting at a certain, a certain shutter speed or shooting this, this things you gotta look for, you gotta have it look a certain way it's there's there are some things that I will always do in my photos because like I I for the most part always level my photos because I want I I like I like it when they're level but there's no you know as long as you're capturing a moment like you can it's your that's where sort of like that's why I like to call it art not content because no one's gonna get the same shot that I'm gonna take and even if they have the same camera, they're staying at the same place, they're going to look at that and see it differently than I am, right? So, like, let's say, like, you have different, basically everyone has a different vision. So I sometimes see photographers stand right behind the goal. And that's not something that most people would do. But that's, they know what they want to get from out of this. And it's these sort of, it's that, that, that's what makes it so interesting to me is like you can really bring in your own point of view so like when I started shooting I remember like I just watched as many videos as I could and I still like I still keep some of what I've learned through through them today they were like you know you want a player's eyes you want to be able to see the whites in their eyes that's a sign that you got you got the shot if you can see the whites because their eyes are open and they're looking at the ball you want the ball in the shot and for for the first two years, I I took that like to I used that so intently. You know, all my shots had to fit this sort of like this this frame. But in all honesty, it's you know it's just one way of doing it. But I've shot games in yeah I've I like there some of my favorite photos break these rules. They're slightly out of focus, but you know they're more interesting to me. I think just bringing in your own kind of style is the best thing you can do because no one's going to do it exactly like you do take advantage of that 
Um, obviously, for the most part, photographers shoot with a fast shutter speed, meaning like they capture the mo the the frame very quickly. But you know, I've taken, I've accidentally, you know, there have been times where for video you got to switch your setting, shoot at low shutter speed. Um, and I've I've switched back to photo, but I forgot to switch my settings back to match that I'm on the photo. So I've taken shots that basically kind of will capture the motion blur. Like if a player is moving their hand, the you won't see a static shot of their hand, but you'll see it moving across. And I've, that's happened completely by accident to me before. And I, to be honest, I, I, I'm never disappointed when it does because it's just a different way of looking at a scene. I don't think there's, there's necessarily a right way. I just think that people kind of learn what works and what doesn't. And a lot of time people will use the same techniques overall for what does work, but you know, there's nothing wrong with shooting a different way. I think it's as long as you're doing what you think is best, then you're going to get your, the shots you want. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, thank you for coming on. And that was so insightful, you know, given your input and your insight into taking pictures most of the things that you mentioned I had no clue about before today and it's so uh, refreshing to hear a different point of view in football you know not everybody has the same experiences Pro point proven with yourself you know somebody who's running operations for example on a match day will have a totally different experience to you so I'm just really excited with the way Canadian uh, football soccer is heading, you know, it's going to create a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors are going to open for people like yourself. And uh, I'm just really excited to see what happens. Um, yeah, just talk, end on that, basically. How you see Canadian football soccer going and where you see yourself going with that. Yeah, like in the past year, like Canada, we brought home gold at the Olympics. We brought, we've beaten Mexico, we've beaten the United States. It's, it's a really exciting time. And I think it's it, like, it's something that's a long time coming because like, Canada is a country of immigrants. Like everyone I know, most people I know have one, two immigrant parents or immigrants themselves. And I think, you know, to be able to finally reflect that in our football is something that I, I'm so excited about. I think, you know, even after, after the World Cup, like I think that we have such an exciting time. I think anyone who wants to support the sport in this country, you know, national team is amazing. Keep cheering on the national team is is mainstream now, and that's exactly how it should be. But you know, even just try like going out there supporting CPL clubs. The level might not be the same as national team, but this is the only way we're going to see growth. We we needed this for we've been begging for this for so long. And this is the, the best way to watch the sport grow in this country is to, to get out there and just support CPL clubs, grassroots clubs, even your MLS club, anything like that, just to watch the sport grow. It's an exciting time. I promise anyone who, who wants to get into Canadian, uh, Canadian football will not be disappointed at, no matter what level they start watching. So you're telling everyone, basically, ditch the hockey sticks and pick up a football. Listen, that's what I did when I was 10 years old. So, and it worked out pretty well for me. I think people in general will be pretty happy if they do too. Okay. On that ending notes, uh, you know, make sure you like it. If you did like the video, make sure you subscribe. And like I said, I want to provide a lot of Canadian based content for you guys, because I know a lot of people who do subscribe to the channel are from Canada. So um, I don't want to let you down 100%. Thanks for coming on, Kefirin, and, you know, check out his uh, stuff. What, what, do you, what pages do you have and where to find you? Yeah, so um, on, on, uh, on Instagram, at Kevin G, or at Kevin G, so K-E-V-E-R-E-N-G. Um, on Twitter, it's my full name, at Kevin G. And, you know, I, I have a link on... Uh, my my youtube channel as well my bio uh sometimes i just you know like i said i throw my phone on my camera and just sort of you know document the game and my experience shooting it if you want to see that but 
yeah, honestly, just, you know, it, it just being able to come on here and talk to you is the best way I think I can help, yeah. you know, reach out and show people what I do. So thank you. No worries. No worries, man. Thank you for coming on and thanks for sharing your story. That's what we're about. We 258 support section. Um, for more content like this, like, share and subscribe. Mm-hmm.